fortune so that they do get through these days to get through the end we dreamed of to many girls. That was Fire and Sun by Mina Tyndall. Pauline de Lassu, the Parisian singer-songwriter behind the project, is releasing a new EP featuring live and stripped back versions of songs she recorded on an album called Sister last year. And she joins me virtually from the Basque Country to tell me more about it. Mina, thank you so much for being on the show. I've been a big fan for many years, so I'm very excited to talk to you virtually. Um, tell us a little bit more about this EP. It's, uh, it was recorded as part of an intimate film session for the cool French platform called La, La Blogothèque, and you recorded it in a studio called LFO in the south of France. So this was last summer when restrictions were a little bit lighter. Can you tell us a little bit more about what inspired this live session? First of all, thank you for having me. I'm really happy. Um, well, yet yeah, this record, uh, this live EP was just a way to find a solution to play these songs because the record was released in October and we knew at that time that we wouldn't be able to play them live ever. And uh, we had this project. I wanted to have a, a lot of visual for this record. And once again, a lot of restriction happened with the making a video clip. I wanted to do a movie at first. And so we ended up uh, having this idea of just like trying to play the songs as and the blogotech is like the the production and they are friends and they know how to do that how to tape and film uh, music better than anyone so we ended up having this project and it was wonderful it was just having a little show really intimate for to, to, to let the song leave and, and breathe outside of the record. Because yeah, in many ways, it's a way for you to tour without touring because the coronavirus pandemic has really put a question mark over live music right now. And this, this EP really is, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful live rendition of some of the songs off your album, uh, Sister, which you released last year, uh, last October, including a new song as well called Indigo. How did you choose the different songs that you're going to put on this EP? We were just like four musicians um, and uh, literally we wanted the really acoustic versions of the songs. And so in that, you know, in that sense, you really understand really quickly what song works the best with just like a guitar or just a, it was really few minimalist um, instruments around us. So we just wanted to also focus on the vocals. And I asked my really amazing, talented friend, Kate Stables, to to come to, to come to the south of France with me and to just spend these three days um, working on these songs and just singing them. And because we toured together uh, the previous year before coronavirus happened, and so she's really one of my favorite voice. And it was so nice that she accepted to come and recorded these versions. So it was really that we chose a song for the... I think for the vocals and the environment that we had. Well, let's take another sneak peek. Uh, this is a, a track off the album. It's called Give a Little Love. Take a listen. Give a little kiss to world my loneliness Couldn't see at best The burdens of my breast All the troubles of the past I realized at last So that was Give a Little Love off Mina Tindall's uh, latest EP. You mentioned there uh, you perform uh, alongside This Is Kit's Kate Stables, as well as the composer David Chalmain and the Nationals' Bryce Desner, who happens to be your husband as well. Uh, you've collaborated on some of their albums. What is it like playing with and performing with someone that you share your life with? It's actually, I think when you're lucky um, that to make it work, it's a really, really warm uh, feeling because you feel safe whatever you do you know like every time I went on stage with him I always felt like someone had my back and nothing bad could happen you know like I usually don't have a bad um, experience of 
stage, but sometimes I feel you can feel really vulnerable. And when it's by my side, I feel better. So it's really good. And as an in just a, a musician and an artist, I really am a big fan of his work. So it's always it's a great um, dynamic in a. It's, w- it's wonderful to be able to, to record that, that kind of connection, as you say. In fact, uh, your, your album features a beautiful love letter to your husband. It's called Belle Pénitence. And, and your album, Sister, uh, which was released last October, is also populated with all kinds of creatures, uh, lions on parade, uh, kings and sirens, women's with wings. We're going we're gonna to show you some paintings, actually, uh, that you painted. There's actually a, song, a painting for each song. Uh, do you imagine these paintings as you're writing the song, or how, how does it work? How does that process work? Oh, that's really sweet of you. I didn't know you were you would show that. Um, no, that's really different. It's for the lockdown when I spend... Um, so I have a little son, and we have a little son, and we were trying to... Um, we were locked down in a, in a, in a, not in our place, in a, in a different house. And so we ended up having no toys for him. And so we ended up drawing a lot. And, uh, and, I ended, and I started a cycle of like painting and drawing, which I haven't done in a long time. And so after drawing like maybe 100 fake toys for my <laughs> son, and I ended up having this uh, paintings. I'm trying to think about painting and music a lot these days. So. Well, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful um, start at least. And we look forward to seeing what else you're going to produce in this, uh, this uh, yeah. synergy between music and painting. We're going to move on to some other music news making headlines and the French singer songwriter Eddie Depreto has released his hotly anticipated sophomore album. It's called A Tous les Bâtards to All the Bastards. Now, Born in Paris, uh, in the suburbs of Paris, rather, Eddie de Preto has already made waves with his first album. It's called Cure, and his style really draws as much from 60s chanson française as well as contemporary hip-hop. And he was our guest on Encore, and he explained why he decided to call his album To All the Bastards. Take a listen. It's a reference to a song on the album called Freaks, which is about being bizarre or strange, terms that were used to describe me from a very young age. I wanted to reappropriate these terms to turn them into something powerful and positive instead of a negative slur. All these words, ugly, bizarre, strange, bastard, can be turned into something motivational. So you can watch that interview with Eddie de Preto on our website. Now, Eddie de Preto explained that he couldn't see himself uh, writing songs in, in another language than his mother tongue, which is French. Your mother tongue is French, and you write songs both in French and in English. How do you choose which language to write your songs in? I, I haven't... Um, I, I chose a long time ago not to choose between the, the two languages. I even On my first record, I even sung in, in Spanish. And it's because I have a Spanish origins in my family, and I've always found it's like a... Um, uh, a painter who would choose like a uh, watercolor or oil painting, you know, to like to, to make a piece, and it just opened up another poetry and another uh, another other images, you know. It gives another texture to what you're saying, and uh, I've always um, listened to a lot of anglophone music. Mostly, my 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 education in music has been through anglophone artists, so. It's always, it, it's just like it comes with, um, it's, a, it's a really uh, almost sensual feeling, you know, when you take your instrument and you start singing, it, you go towards like a, a, a sensitivity, a French one or, or another one. It mm-hmm. could be another language, you know. I'm in the Basque Coast right now and uh, my son is learning Basque. You know, it's a really difficult language, yeah. but that could be like another I just think like languages are like part of it's like instruments. You know, you can when you you start learning them, you can express really different things. It's beautiful. Well, it's a beautiful way to put it. A uh, language is kind of a color on a palette that you have access to. We're going to uh, move on to some other music news. London Grammar has released a new record called Californian Soil. 
the UK electronic pop trio's third album draws on a renewed sense of extroversion and energy, with singer Hannah Reed exploring femininity and relationship dynamics in deeply honest and personal lyrics. According to the band, it's the most upbeat London grammar has ever been. Check it out. But I never had a name And I never felt the same And finally, for all you punk rock fans out there, U.S. legends, The Offspring are releasing their first studio LP in nearly a decade. Now, during their hiatus, the frontman Dexter Holland got a Ph.D. in molecular biology, so a pretty cool thing to do there. The new album is called Let the Bad Times Roll, and it's got their signature energetic, upbeat songs with acerbic lyrics, like the title track. And we're going to leave you with that song, but before we go, I want to thank my guest, Mina Tyndall. Thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, and be sure to check out her new EP and her uh, latest album, Sister, for more arts and culture news. Head to our website and stay in touch on social media. And stay tuned to France 24. More news is coming up right after this.